Hello everyone. I would like to thank the organizing committee of the SER Convergence and also the AFLAR for this opportunity to present this work on peripheral antithesitis in Algerian spondyloarthritis. I have no relevant financial relationship with ineligible companies to disclose. Antisitis is the hallmark in spondyloarthritis. Maghreb in spa and especially Algerians differs from European, but its high prevalence its severity at the actual and articular level, especially for coccidis. But what about antisitic involvement? Antisitis is the inflammation of the antesis. It is the specific impairment of spondyloarthritis. It explains all manifestation of the disease, namely antisitis, osteitis, and synovitis according to McGonagall's work. The old concept of antesis defined it as the focal attachment of to bone of ligament, tendon, and capsules. Fibrocartilaginous antheses are those involved in spondyloarthritis. It is composed of four successive stata, as you see on the right side of the screen, tendon, then fibrocartilage, then the calcified fibrocartilage, and then bone. The fibrocartilage is the key in the protection of the tendon during motion. But multiple works have shown that the antithesis is more complex than that, and its definition has been extended to the organ made up of antithesis stricto sensus plus all the adjacent structure like bone, fat, bursa, and synovia. Farther still, the definition of the antithesis has been extended to functional antithesis, which correspond to um, which corresponded to all the sites where the tendon does not even insert to the bone, but has uh, a fibrocartilage who, uh, that protect it in, during motion. For example, in the left side of uh, the screen, we see the paratendon of the extensor tendon with the fibrocartilage at the level of the MCP joints. On the right part of the screen, we see the fibrocartilage in blue of the peroneal tendon, which crosses the lateral malleolus of the leg. Let's move on antithesitis in spondyloarthritis. On clinical exam, it can cause pain, rarely swelling, and can also be asymptomatic. Common involved sites are the antheses of the lower limbs, mainly Achilles tendon and the plantar aponeurosis. On imaging, X-rays and scintigraphy do not allow early diagnosis and are irradiating techniques. MRI can visualize the involvement of the insertion of the tendon and adjacent structure, notably the bone marrow edema, but it remains inaccessible and expensive technique. Ultrasound is the recommended imagining technique by the SS and the GRAPA groups in the exploration of the antithesis because it have a higher resolution, it's superior than clinical and MRI, it allows a real-time diagnosis plus a dynamic exam, it allows also on one exam the exploration of multiple sites, it has a good reproductibility, it is feasible in term and time, it's safe, it's accessible and economic. It allows also ultrasound guided injection and it is sensitive to change and or treatment. But ultrasound don't visualize the bone marrow edema and its operator and machine quality dependent. In this uh, image, you see the uh, longitudinal view on ultrasound of the Achilles tendon. We see the insertion of the tendon at the level of the bone. We see the fibrocartilage, the retrocalcaneal bursa, and the bony cortex of the calcaneus. 
In 2014, the OMERACT group published the ultrasound definition of normal onthesis on ultrasound and limited it to the area of the insertion of tendon, ligament, and capsule, contrary to the concept of the onthesis organ. They exclude the bursa and the body of the tendon. So, on ultrasound, the anthesis is a regular margin with the same ultrasound appearance and thickness according to the corresponding tendon or ligament. On the same article, they also gave the definition of elementary lesions of anthesis as we see on this figure. On A, you have the hypoechogenicity, on V, the increased. Uh, thickness of the tendon, on C you see an antisophite, on D we see calcification, erosion on E, and on F we see the signal doppler at uh, 2 mm from the bony cortex. In 2018, the MRACT verified the ultrasound definition of the anthesis and limited it to the previous elementary lesions, which are found only in the area within 2 mm from the bony cortex. They also agreed to score antisophite and calcification as a unique element, and finally classified inflammatory and structural lesions. On this image of longitudinal scan of the Achilles anthesial insertion on Doppler mode, we see the area of limitation of ultrasound lesion of anthesis. After this reminder, let's move to our study. It's a study done on Algerian spondyloarthritis cohort and which aimed to estimate and compare global and site-specific clinical and ultrasound prevalences of peripheral anthesitis. It was an observational monocenter study, case study carried out between January 2015 and April 2016. We included all spondyloarthritis responding to assess criteria whose age and onset of the disease were over 18 years. We excluded all the situation where the ultrasound exam of the anthesis could be modified. We collected demographic and clinical, biological and iconographic data to verify the inclusion criteria at visit one and we performed the clinical and ultrasound examination of anthesis at visit 2. We used the ultrasound OMERACT 2014 definition of anthesitis. We examined 13 anthesis per patient clinically and 34 anthesis per patient on ultrasound. The result was, was as follows. We included 208 patients, mainly men. The mean age was 14 years, mean disease duration 11 years, and the mean age on onset 28 years, and 10% of patients were smokers. Over 19% of patients suffered from spinal inflammatory pain, 67% presented arthritis. Importantly, 64% of patients were treated with NSAIDs and 19% with biologics, which could, be, which could influence the result of our study. 64% of the SPA was active and 70% of patients were classified as actual SPA. For the prevalence of anthesitis or at the patient level, as you can see on this graph, clinical prevalence is represented in green and ultrasound prevalence in orange. At least one clinical, at least one clinical anthesitis was present in 44% of patients. The highest frequency was found at the level of the inferior insertion of the patellar ligament. At least one ultrasound anthesitis was found in 83% of patients and the highest frequency was found in the Achilles anthesis estimated at 69%. The ultrasound prevalence was significantly higher than the, clin than the clinical prevalence at the level of most anthesitic sites, notably the Achilles tendon. 
At the Anthesis level, note that we have examined 6,240 clinically and 7,072 on ultrasound. The prevalence of at least one Anthesis involved on clinical exam was 11.7%. The lateral epicondylar anthesis was more frequently involved in 27%. On ultrasound, at least one anthesis was involved in 22% of cases, and the Achilles tendon was the most achieved in 68% of cases. The superiority of ultrasound was found at the level of all anthesitic sites apart from the lateral epicondylar and the superior insertion of patellar ligament. 22% on ultrasound versus 12% on clinical exam on all sites. On this graph are represented the different frequencies of ultrasonographic elementary lesion and orange gradient for inflammatory lesion, hypoechogenicity being the most frequent lesion and at least one Doppler signal within 2 mm of the cortical bone was found in 2% of cases and mainly the anthesitis at the Achilles tendon in 49% of cases. So, this is an example of a longitudinal and transverse view of Achilles tendon with signal Doppler erosion and uh, anthesophyte and calcification of our study. We compared our result to the D'Agostino study, which had the same main aim, a shift on French cohort, which had included 164 spamitin AMOR or ESSG criteria. The two cohorts were not really comparable in terms of clinical and demographic data. Radiographic sacroiliitis and actual spa were more common in our study. No differences between clinical prevalences of anthesitis either at the patient or anthesis level. At the level of anthesis, the lateral epicondylar was the most frequently affected site in our study, while in the METES study, it was rather the greater trochanter and the inferior insertion of the patellar ligament. No ultrasound definition of anthesitis was used in the D'Agostino study, while we used the ultrasound 2014 OMRAC definition. At the patient level, the ultrasound prevalence of anthesitis was higher in D'Agostino study, 98% versus 86%, which could be explained by the inclusion of ultrasound lesions such as bursitis and tendinosis. Same result at the level of anthesis, with a higher frequency of ultrasound anthesis in the D'Agostino study, and the Achilles anthesis was the most frequently affected site in the two studies, 79% and 68% respectively. On conclusion, we found a high prevalence of anthesis on clinical and ultrasound exam, 45% versus 87% respectively. Ultrasound anthesitis was higher than clinical, whether be at the anthesis or patient level. The Achilles anthesis was the most affected at which the Doppler also signal was the most detected. No difference in the clinical prevalence of anthesitis between Algerian and European was noted, but ultrasound prevalence was higher in European than in our study. I think all patients who participate to the study and the working staff of our hospital and I thank you for your listening.